Hey YouTube, this is Marcus or Garwin again with another video. Today's video is going to be on a sort of obscure topic uh, regarding a game called uh, Discworld. Now, Discworld is a popular book series by the author Terry Pratchett that my wife is a big fan of. And uh, we found out that there was actually a video game made for the uh, made years and years ago uh, based on the book series, or on that world anyway, and there's a couple of games. And so we went and looked up the first game, and the first one was actually released on uh, Mac OS, not OS X, the old Mac OS, uh, the PlayStation 1, Sega Saturn, and MS-DOS. Now, I we have a PlayStation uh, sitting around here, but I didn't... I was fairly certain none of the stores around here would have a copy of a sort of obscure game like this. And uh, I also found out that at least the PC versions of the game, or maybe the, the title in general, is now what's considered Abandonware. Now Abandonware is basically when a game gets so old, uh, a lot of times either the publishers and developers just don't exist anymore, and nobody's trying to claim royalties on it, or they just get, start giving the game away. Like, you can go to Bethesda's website and download the first two Elder Scrolls games legally for free of charge because the games have just gotten so old that they're just giving them away to people. And uh, the, Disc, the, the Discworld game is one of those games. Now, uh, you cannot run MS-DOS software on modern Windows PCs. You actually have to have an emulator uh, to run DOS applications on your Windows PC. Uh, I use DOSBox. I believe that's the only one available actually anymore. But it's an extremely reliable, uh, it's a really good DOS emulator. You can use it to run not just games, but older DOS software if you happen to have some laying around. So you're going to want to go to their website, go to DOSBox.com, download and install DOSBox for your particular operating system. And after you've downloaded it, uh, assuming you're on Windows, go ahead and install the application. And now we're going to go ahead and we're going to set up DOSBox for the first time here. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how I've got mine set up. So we're going to do the Windows key and R, and we're going to run percent sign app data percent sign and click OK. And then we're going to go back here into the app data folder because it defaults into roaming. Go back to app data, go to local, go down and find the DOSBox folder, and you'll see this conf file in here. If that file does not exist yet, you may have to actually open DOSBox for the first time and then close it in order to generate this file. But we're going to right click it and we're going to open it with a text editor. You can even use Notepad if you want to. And uh, we're going to change a couple of things in here. Uh, the first thing I changed was actually the window resolution. You can set this to whatever you want it to be. I've got it set to 1600 by 900 so that on my 1080p screen it's still a pretty decent size but it doesn't fill the screen. If I want to do that, I can just make it full screen. Side note here, keep in mind that at the time DOS was the dominant operating system, PCs used screens that were in resolutions that were a 4 to 3 ratio instead of a 16 to 9 or 16 to 10 ratio like they are today. So a popular resolution might have been 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768. So if you use a widescreen resolution in DOSBox, uh, things that use artwork like video games may appear squashed or stretched uh, at that resolution so just keep that in mind uh, and then I changed the output to OpenGL it defaults to like surface which does not support certain things and if you want to know the nitty-gritty details you can see here uh, you know possible value surface overlay OpenGL and then you can go to DOSBox's website and they've got some very easy to understand uh, documentation explaining all of this stuff. So this is what I did. I changed window resolution to 1600 by 900 and I changed output to OpenGL. And then we scroll down here and your DOS uh, emulator needs a C drive. And so what we have is we have a folder in my downloads under emulator ROMs called DOS. Now the contents of this folder is what DOSBox is going to treat like its C drive. Now you can manually mount folders yourself every time you start DOSBox, but it makes it easier to at least set up your C drive every time you start it so you don't have to do that manually every single time you run the application. So if you scroll all the way down here to the bottom, you'll see this section called Auto Exec, and it's got some comments here. You know, lines in this section will be run at startup. You can put your mount lines here. So you can see we're mounting this location as drive letter C, 
with this much free space and then we're changing directory to the C drive so that when we open DOSBox we are already mounted and changed into our C folder which shows this. Now one thing to keep in mind when you're working with DOS it's not case sensitive but it does limit the number of characters that file and folder names can be to eight characters. Now you can have stuff in there that's more than eight characters long but what will end up happening is let's say we've got a text file here right and we make it some really long file name and uh, what we'll do is it'll just truncate that file name and then add tilde one so that you know this is the file name for this file. Now also file uh, changes made to the file structure of your virtual C drive do not reflect in DOSBox until you restart it. So if we delete this file here that we just made and then we run dir Okay, so that one actually did. A lot. Sometimes when you add or create or delete folders, uh, they may not necessarily show up. So I always just make a habit of restarting DOSBox when I make changes to the file structure because I've had some things not like it when I messed with C drive while it was running. So we've got DOSBox downloaded and installed. We've got it configured. The next thing we need to do is we need to get our game. Now, since uh, this Discworld game is abandonware, like I said, it's been abandoned and it's released for free you can find it on various abandonware websites like abandonia and things of that nature i found it on bestoldgames.net uh... that's where i found the english version the first version i found was actually in french and there's also aside from the languages there's a floppy disk version and there's a cd-rom version the floppy disk version does not have any digital audio it doesn't have any voiceover tracks or anything like that all it has is the midi music uh... soundtrack uh, but no sound effects or anything like that. So if you want to have the full experience with sound effects and voiceovers, you're going to need to find the copy that is the CD-ROM. The floppy disk version is something like 20 megabytes, which tells me it was still like you know 15 or so floppy disks. But then the CD-ROM version is we have it here, uh, 385 megabytes. So what we're going to want to do? Let's go ahead and okay, DOSBox is closed. So I've got 7-zip installed that allows me to extract ISO images. So if you get an ISO file, just go to 7-zip.org, I believe it is. Yep. And install 7-zip, and it will allow you to extract ISO files like regular uh, archives. So we're going to right-click the ISO file here. We're going to extract files, but we're going to extract them to a new folder. We're going to go here to Downloads, Emulator ROMs, DOS. We're going to make a new folder in here. We're going to name it uh, DWorld CD. Okay. Oh, I guess it didn't take. Did I just leave it named uh, new folder? Where are we at? Me downloads emulator ROMs DOS. No, okay, it took. There we go. And we're going to hit OK. And we're going to hit close. Now, when we go in here, we should see DWorld CD. Uh, we can move this stuff back out here. We don't need it in a nested in another folder. And so now what we need to do, we minimize all this, reopen our DOS box, and now what we need to do is we need to mount that CD-ROM folder as a CD so that DOS box sees it as if you put a CD in the CD tray. So what we're going to do to do that, we're going to say mount D drive as now we're going to put the file path in parentheses or in quotation marks because there is spaces in the file name. So we're going to say quotation mark c colon backslash users backslash me backslash uh, this backslash. Now this C drive is actually the real C drive for Windows 10. You're telling DOSBox to mount this virtual drive as this real folder. Uh, emulator ROMs backslash DOS backslash DWorld CD close quotation mark space minus T space CD-ROM drive D is mounted as that so now we're going to change to our D drive and we're going to run the disk command and it's going to ask to install to drive letter C and what's going to happen here it's going to start the game but uh, I had to make some weird the whole reason I'm making this video is because I had to do some weird little tricks to get the game to function properly 
Uh, so we're going to go ahead and hit yes to drive letter C. It's going to start the game. And uh, then we are going to, you can see we have no audio. So this is what I had to, uh, what I had to fix in order for my wife to play the game. So we're going to go ahead and just wait for it to get to uh, this main little menu screen here. All right, once it gets to here, we're going to press the F1 key. And you may need to click inside your window here to capture your mouse. And then we're going to hit quit playing. All right. Now you can see here it has CD'd us into the directory where it installed the game, disk wld.cd. It is imperative that that folder name not change. Now I have historically changed folder names to make things easier to understand what they were. Like, you know, King's Quest was something weird and I just renamed it to KQ because it was easier for me to understand. But in order for your save games to work properly, it is imperative that this folder stay named this because it's hard coded into the game. It looks for this folder name. So anyway, now what we're going to do, we're going to go into the CD drive. We're going to open up the drivers folder and we're going to select all and copy all of the contents of this folder into the actual game installation folder. All right. So now in here we're going to run and config okay yeah so we're gonna have this is one of those moments where we gotta close it because it's not picking up these new files so we need to close reopen DOS box uh, we're going to CD into disk WLD.CD run config and we're going to select our two different audio devices one of them for the MIDI music driver and one of them for the digital audio things like voiceovers and sound effects so we're going to do the MIDI one first we're going to go up and we're going to oh no we're going to go down and select uh, Creative Labs Sound Blaster Pro new version attempt to configure sound driver automatically okay now we're going to go down and select and configure to configure digital audio driver we're going to go up and select Creative Labs Sound Blaster Pro or 100% compatible attempt to configure automatically done now we're going to go down and hit done and now we also have to have the CD-ROM mounted because if you look if we try to run I believe it's DWB is what runs the game now uh, let me see is there a disk executable let's run let me see yeah, so we just run disk. Disk is what runs the game, but it says we the, the CD is not mounted. So what we're going to do now is we're going to mount, because we closed DOSBox, so that CD drive that we mounted earlier is no longer mounted. So we have to do that again. Mount D. Don't worry, we're going to make this whole process easier in a few minutes. But we're doing it all manually now, so I can show you how to do what we're doing here. So we're going to mount, drive letter D, quotation, the long path to where everything is located uh, DOS D World CD minus T CD-ROM enter now drive D is mounted as CD-ROM that so now we run oh darn it okay. we run disk again and the game starts up just fine and now we should have audio oh so hmm. all right so we now have audio Alrighty, so sorry if that audio was a little bit echoey. I forgot that I had my I'm using headphones and I have my speakers turned on and I had things not set quite right in OBS Studio. So anyway, we've got the game running, we have audio working properly, but we still have to manually mount that CD-ROM drive and do everything ourselves. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a batch file that makes it easier to launch that game in the future. Now you still have to do it via a command line interface but it's going to be easier to understand. So let's close DOSBox and we're going to go into our C drive here and we're just going to um, run notepad. All right, Just a basic little notepad. And what we're going to do is the first thing we're going to do 
is we need to mount our D drive as this big long path and this is basically this is gonna what this is gonna be is you're gonna run this batch file and it will do everything needed to run that game automatically uh, so we're gonna say downloads backslash emulator roms backslash dos backslash disk uh, let's say disk wld.cd windows and dos is not case sensitive but it still kinda bugs me to not match uh, oh no 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 not not that uh, D world CD there we go space minus T CD-ROM then we're going to CD into uh, C colon backslash disk WLD dot CD then we're going to launch the disk executable is it uppercase there yeah everything's uppercase so we'll say launch the disk executable and then basically it's going to wait until disk exits so in other words when you exit the game then we're going to mount minus U D which unmounts this CD drive that we mounted up here so that the drive letter D is now available to reuse if you want to run another game without restarting DOSBox now we're going to save this text file to that folder uh, oh right here in the C drive you want to save a file type change it to all files and let's name it D world oh right here's one I already made so we'll just replace it D world dot bat alright we want to replace it yeah so now we will go back out here here's that batch file we just made okay and uh, let me make sure I did that right let me see DOS box let me make sure I did that unmount command correctly here unmount uh, mount mount minus u drive letter okay so I did do that correctly Alrighty, so now when we launch DOSBox, all we should have to do is run the command dworld, and it'll mount that drive, launch the game. Oh my lord, it's loud. and hit escape once it gets to that screen you can skip that and uh... that that's so that is how you get the uh... and we'll just exit DOSBox here so that is how you get the old school abandonware game called uh... Discworld that was released on DOS running in your Windows 10 operating system. Now, you can hit Alt Enter to make that game full screen if you want so that it's not running inside a little window. That's what my wife is doing actually. She's got the computer that I built her hooked up to the living room television with a wireless keyboard and mouse and she's actually playing the game in there on the 55 inch living room television set. So, uh, But it did take me a little while to figure out exactly how to get this game working properly because it didn't it didn't just work you know and I'm comfortable in DOS but even just installing it with the CD it didn't just work I had to figure out that I had to move those files where they needed to be and then make a little batch file for her so uh, so hopefully this little tutorial has been helpful hopefully you've learned a little something uh, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, or suggestions regarding this video or future content that you would like to see, feel free to post it in the comment section below. And as always, this is Garrowin out. Y'all have a good one.